Now, computing moment of inertia can be easy or it can be kind of rough depending on the shape of the domain that you're working with. We're gonna start with an example that's really simple. It's in 2D, it's got a nice shape, all the integrals are gonna be easy. Let's say that we take a square plate in the plane of varying density, let's say rho equals x plus y, and it's got one corner at the origin and the other corner in the upper right at the point L comma L. Now let's say that it is um, rotating about the origin. So you need to imagine the axis coming out of the origin towards you. Let's start off by thinking about the mass. The mass element is the density, x plus y, times the area element, dA, where dA is really dx times dy. I think of that little infinitesimal rectangle. Now, let's, for fun, start off by computing the mass. It's the integral as x and y go from zero to L of this mass element of x plus y dy dx. You can check very easily that that leads to a total mass of L cubed. Now, to compute the moment of inertia, I, we integrate the element di, which is r squared dm. We already know what dm is. What is r? It's the distance from that mass element to the origin, which is where the axis of rotation pierces through the plane. That distance, r, is square root of quantity x squared plus y squared. So di is really quantity x squared plus y squared times the mass element times x plus y times dA. Now integrating that as x and y go from zero to L, what we need to integrate, expanding that out, is x cubed plus xy squared plus x squared y plus y cubed. That first term, x cubed, integrates to x to the fourth over four times y, all of those evaluated from zero to L, that gives me L to the fourth over four times L. The next term integrates to L squared over two times L cubed over three. The next term to L cubed over three times L squared over two. And the last term, L to the fourth over four times L. Combine these all together and you get five L to the fifth over six. Now we're going to do something in this last step that is pretty common in moment of inertia problems. We're going to go back to the mass that we computed. Remember that m equals l cubed. And we're going to substitute that in for the final answer so that we get a final answer of i equals 5 sixth ml squared. Now there are a couple of reasons for doing that as we'll see. One of which is we feel pretty good about the units on this because the moment of inertia element is really a length squared times a mass element. And here our final answer is proportional to the mass and proportional to the length scale of this body squared. So that's pretty good. That means that we've got the units on this right. Pay attention in the problems that we do, and you'll see that we're often converting to that final form.